thanks a lot for having us in today. This is such a cool place. You know, the minute you walk in, the first thing you get is this, this really comfortable but very cool and unique yeah. family room. Thank you. Thank you. Don't get too comfortable because you're going to be gone <laughs> as soon as the camera's off. <laughs> yeah, a lot of weird stuff here. I got, uh, this is an award I got from President Bush okay, for being a, a good patriot. This is just some of the stuff I love. Johnny Sacco. Do you remember Johnny Sacco? I've heard. Kind of an obscure thing. I loved it. Lost in space. I just built this. Huh? Oh, that's so a model. It's you an old model yourself. kit. I built these when I was a kid. This is a, a gift from Creed. You know the band Creed? Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and Frankenstein. I still love Frankenstein. And then uh, here's more. Uh, you know, I love the old uh, uh, Japanese stuff. Huh? That is neat stuff. Ultraman. You, you remember Ultraman? Got his power from the sun? No? <laughs> How about this? Barry Williams. No, the Brandy now he's a good friend of yours. He was at your wedding well, and you, you know, know he, he hung out. The thing is, he's usually here by now. We usually sit around and watch reruns. He loves TV land. That's all he watches. No kidding. Lives in the past. <laughs> drugs, I think. Drugs. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's it's probably very was. It's very sad. So he's the only Brady that ever comes over, though. Is that, is that correct? That, or? Well, the rest of them, you know, died in that plane crash. Right. And then how about this? How about this thing? <laughs> Can, we get a, can you get a close-up of this? Look how scary that is. This thing scares the hell out of me. That is absolutely this, freaky. This scares me. Isn't he freaky looking? He's very freaky looking. But you know, what, you know what? This this scares me. You know what else scares the heck out of me? What's that? This scares the bejesus out of me. Snuggles the fabric softening bear. Do you know what I'm talking I about? I know exactly what you're it's talking about. He's got that giggle. He's, he's, hey, he comes out, of the, comes out of the laundry. I'm Snuggles. Scares me. This scares me. This thing scares me. I'm not kidding you. So have you always been the kind of guy who likes to have stuff around the house that freaks him out? Yeah. You know what? You like being scared later? Here's the thing. When I was a kid... The shows I like, you know, these were all off TV. I saw them in reruns. Right. So I could never get any of the toys. And now with, uh, now with, with eBay and some of the different, uh, you know, and I go to garage sales, whatever, I'm able to find toys from shows that I loved when I was a kid. Right. But there weren't toys around. So it takes me back to a, uh, a time of, of innocence and a time when, you know, when I was... <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, Man Cow shares his plan for world domination. So we're at home, Chicago. I tell you, one of, the, one of the really cool things in this room is this mirror. Now, this is, there's a story behind this. Yeah, this is, uh, this is from the 1920s. This is from Coney Island. Okay. And this is from the merry-go-round. And it was uh, the Garden of Eden. These are supposed to be apples. And see the carved snakes that tempted Eve. And I just, I just love this piece. No kid. And then here's a, uh, this is a shot from, this is a shot from when I got married. Nice. That's that's, that's down that's, Michigan Avenue, right? That's on Michigan Avenue. That's a chosen one. <laughs> she looks very cute without the It, it takes a very special one to put up with uh, you being here. Right. So. <laughs> now, and these, these really cool pillars. I mean, yeah, these are, with the these are from the... Um, They've kind of got a 1930s, like, Art Deco-y well, feel I, to them or something. I, I, think they're, uh, I think these are late 1800s, and they are, uh, they're from the Mason's Lodge. Oh, really? And uh, they have all kinds of uh, symbolism and stuff that I don't understand. But basically, from what I, under, from what I do understand, with these pillars... Um, I can control the world. Um, <laughs> I just haven't figured out how to manipulate them yet. Oh, well, that's, I'd love to be here when you do. Okay. You know, one of the other cool things, you are so closely associated with, with uh, Q101, right. which is obviously an alt-rock station. Going over here, looking at your jukebox, you right. see all kinds of different musical tastes. I mean, you've right. got the Kinks, and Donny Osmond. I know you're a big Moody Blues fan, Phil Collins. So you, you really there's have... There's classical music in there. There's, there's all kinds of weird stuff. I... I like everything. I like a little bit of everything. And, you know, that, that is what I think has, has served uh, my radio show and my stuff on Fox TV and everything because I'm interested in everything. Right. I, I'm kind of like a good guy to talk to at a cocktail party because I know a little bit about everything. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, know, exactly. I don't know a lot about any one subject. I'm a, I'm a borderline uh, moron. I, I, I make a, a good radio host or a good car salesman. That's about it. Just because I know, I know about a lot. I have a lot of different tastes, right. as you can see as you walk through this place. You know, you got this picture of your dad up here, and I know that it, right. th this picture is pretty famous now because it is on the cover of your book. Dad, or, Dames, Demons, and Dwarf. Which this, is, this is my dad at 15. He was just about ready to get this car. $35 he paid for this car. Get out of here. And, you know, I, I, it's, it's not hip. It's not very Generation X to say this, but uh, I, I actually love my dad, and he was, he was a, a pal. <laughs> and when he passed away, it, it sent me into a tailspin. And I kept a diary, and I published a book. You know something? I don't know that there's any pain... Is your dad still alive? He is. He I is. don't know if there's any pain worse for a son than to lose his father. And I kept a diary, and I never, just of, of the feelings I was going through, and I never thought I would do anything with it. And they called and said, hey, you want to write a book? I said, eh. And a couple days later, I sent this diary off, and it became a, a big hit. People have really responded to it. 
Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's an incredible book, and I think one of the things that you, you definitely very quickly get this strong bond you had with your father. Yeah. One of the things I think that kind of reflects into your career here, you know, there, you mentioned P.T. Barnum a lot in, right. this, in this book. And, of course, P.T. Barnum is the name associated with the, with the circus and, and promotion and the, the, yeah. the master manipulator promoter. And in a lot of ways, I think that people look at you as kind of a modern-day P.T. Barnum, and you, you compare yourself in some ways in the book. We yeah. talk about the freak show, and, and, and definitely with people who are fans of the Mankind Morning Madhouse, you really see the, the connections, that this right. is something, somebody who influenced you. I do talk about P.T. Barnum in the book, and, you know, I'm able to sit down with scholars, and I know everything about P.T. Barnum, and it's, it's inherent. And I have dreams as P.T. Barnum. And I went to the museum in Connecticut, and I, I know everything about him. And not from reading books. I just know the man. There is a, there is a bit of me in him. And, 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 or him and me. What, what I like is, he did these great jokes, but he always did it with a straight face. P.T. Barnum made his first million, a nickel at a time. A, he, a mil, imagine how many people had to go through. A nickel at a time made a million dollars. Do you know what it was? He had a big picture of a six-foot man-eating chicken. This, this great freak show banner. And when you got inside, do you know what it was? It was a six-foot man having a chicken dinner. And then they had a sign that said, Shh, don't tell anybody. Get your friends to, to, for the joke. And, and that's what I do. I, I, do my, I like to do the, my radio show with a straight face. Everybody else has the fake crowd laughing and all that. I don't think you have to tell people it's a joke. With the radio morning shows, in right. a lot of ways it polarizes people. Right. I mean, you're a yeah. figure who, who's yeah. been controversial at times. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a love them or hate them type of mentality. Right. You know what? Let me tell you something. Love is easy. Hatred is easy. Okay? It is. Yep. It is. Who, who, I don't care if people love or hate me. What I hate is apathy. Apathy is death. I love when people go, I hate your guts. I want you dead. Great. I love you. Great. It's the same to me. Right. And, and first, and, and I can't let a bunch of strangers control who I am. I do my own thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You can't let a bunch of, so many of us live our lives where we're defined by what other people think of us. And I just refuse to live that way.